So this next video is about more scientific discoveries. This is this ancient discovery should have been kept a secret or should it have? Nah, we don't like secrets. We want to know. Let's check this video out. Each archeological discovery usually yields answers. However, there are some ancient secrets that probably should have remained hidden beneath the sands of time. From cursed tablets to mysterious mummies, here are 20 ancient shocking discoveries that shouldn't exist. Number 20, the Lovers of Valdaro. In 2007, archeologists at a Neolithic tomb in San Giorgio near Mantua, Italy, discovered a pair of human skeletons. It's believed that the skeletons date back to 6,000 years ago, but it's not their age that made them stand out. What made archeologists intrigued was the way the two skeletons were interred. Believed to be the remains of a young man and a young woman in a tight embrace, the pair were immediately called the Lovers of Valdaro. The skeletons are estimated to be around 20 years old at the time of their deaths, standing about 5 feet 2 inches tall. The male skeleton had a flint arrowhead near his neck, while the female had a long flint blade along her thigh and two flint knives under her pelvis. Initially, the presence of these items led archaeologists to theorize that perhaps the pair suffered from tragic deaths. However, subsequent research revealed that the curious tools were most likely used as part of a burial ritual rather than tools of death. Perhaps their peace should have simply been preserved. But the star- Nah, I don't. It don't make me think they might have possibly died in their sleep hearing all those tools and weapons were around them. No, no. They went out differently. Probably violent. Our crossed lovers were still excavated. To avoid damaging the pair of skeletons, the entire block around them was raised. Seven years after their discovery, both skeletons were placed in a glass case where they were displayed for people to see. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19, Lindo Man. In 1984, peat cutters in the Lindo Moss Potbeak almost had a heart attack when what initially seemed to be a log turned out to be a human leg. Needless to say, they were pretty spooked by what they discovered. The leg turned out to be part of the Lindo Man, one of the most renowned bog bodies discovered in Europe. Despite his well-preserved remains, the Lindo Man lived around 2 BCE to 119 CE. It's believed that he was around 25 years old when he died. Now what's bizarre is the fact that the Lindo Man was unlike other bog bodies discovered in the region. He had well-groomed hair and manicured fingernails, which were unusual in the Iron Age, a period where most people had to toil away. This suggests that the Lindo Man was someone with high status when he was alive. Subsequent research revealed a little about his death. After examining his remains, researchers discovered that he sustained multiple injuries. A blow to the head, a garrote or sinew around his neck, and a broken neck. There were also potential stab wounds. The most chilling part? Rather than being harmed, it seemed like the Lindo Man's death was deliberately done as part of a ritual. Scholars have debated this for decades. Some suggest he was a human sacrifice, a practice believed to appease gods or secure good fortune. Others think he might have been executed as a criminal or murdered for some unknown reason. Regardless, it's a fact that the Lindo Man's remains are one chilling find. Number 18, the Monk Mummy. This mummy, believed to be a teacher of Lama Dashi Dorjo Atigalov, was discovered in Mongolia in 2015. Despite being stuck in a lotus position for years, Senior Buddhists say the monk isn't dead, but rather stuck in a deep meditative trance. This discovery happened in the Songino Kerkon district near Ulan Batar, and the claim about the monk still being alive immediately grabbed global attention. Buddhists who uncovered the mummy claimed that the monk is stuck in Tukdam. According to Buddhist beliefs, it's a rare state of meditation that's one step away from achieving enlightenment. Barry Curzon, a physician to the Dalai Lama and a Buddhist monk himself, suggests that if a mediator can stay in Tukdam for more than three weeks, their body starts to shrink, and eventually, only hairs, nails, and clothes remain. While belief- So my thing is, though, if, if you feel as though cryostation is going to work, and a lot of people do, then what's the difference with this? There's no difference, except that po possibly cryostation may preserve your body in a different way than this does.
Believers of the Dalai Lama are convinced that the monk is simply in deep meditation and even claim that they've seen the monk moving around the temple. Skeptics claim that the monk truly is lifeless. Rather than being in deep meditation, the monk's body has simply been preserved by the dry and cold climate of the region. Number 17. Lake of Skeletons At an astonishing altitude of a staggering 16,470 feet, on top of the Himalayas is a frozen lake. Within this seemingly ordinary body of water are skeletons, hundreds of human skeletons. The story of this chilling lake began in 1942, when a British forest ranger accidentally stumbled upon this frozen lake. After reporting the existence of this horrifying lake, authorities speculated that the bones belonged to Japanese soldiers from World War II, but that theory was quickly debunked. Subsequent research revealed that rather than people from a single upbringing, the skeletons are from a diverse group. Some skeletons date back to the 9th century, primarily locals from Indian tribes, while others have genetic markers suggesting Mediterranean origins, dating to a much later period. So then how did these people end up as a frozen pile of bones thousands of feet in the Himalayas? The most popular story is that these skeletons used to be part of a king's entourage, However, this story goes that the king angered the goddess Nandi Devi, and in her wrath, she sent a hailstorm that ended the lives of the king and his people while they were on a pilgrimage. Of course, this seems like nothing but a myth, but subsequent research revealed that this might not be too far from the truth. Scientific findings revealed that many of the skeletons show signs of blunt force trauma to the head, consistent with injuries caused by large hailstones. Despite these findings, several mysteries linger. For example, why were people from the Mediterranean region present in such a remote location? Some researchers speculate they might have been part of a long-lost trade or pilgrimage route. However, there's no concrete evidence to support this theory, and so this macabre mystery remains to this day. Number 16. Cursed Ring If you're familiar with J.R.R. Tolkien and his works, then perhaps the story of this alleged cursed artifact will be familiar. This ring might look ordinary, but it has a pretty bizarre story. This is the Cursed Ring of Sylvanus, and it's believed to be a cursed artifact. This ring, as its name suggests, belonged to a man named Sylvanus. The story goes that Sylvanus lost the ring, and his suspicions fell onto a man named Senecanus. Enraged, Sylvanus did what any wronged Roman might do. He cursed Senecanus using a lead-cursed tablet. This tablet, found at the Temple of Nodens in Lydney, implored the gods to withhold health from Senecanus until the ring was returned. The curse was then tied to the ring itself. Now the ring faded into obscurity until 1785, when the ring was once again found in a plowed field near Silchester, England. This ring is quite the piece. It's made of gold, weighs about 12 grams, and has a diameter of one inch, suggesting it might have been worn over a glove or on the thumb. The ring has ten facets and features an engraving of the Roman goddess Venus on its bezel. It once again faded into the background until 1929, when Sir Mortimer Wheeler, a prominent archaeologist, linked this ring to the cursed tablet. He even consulted his friend J.R.R. Tolkien, then a professor of Anglo-Saxon at Oxford, to help unravel the mystery of the god Nodens mentioned in the curse. And yes, many believe that this cursed artifact is what led Tolkien to create a series that is now known as one of the greatest classics of all time. Can you imagine that? Imagine how many rings you found or, or pieces of jewelry items that you found growing up. I found a ton of jewelry, different things that you just come across and you put it on and imagine that thing is cursed or somebody somewhere placing a curse on whoever finds it if they don't get it back. I, I never even thought about something like that, man. Number 15, 2,000-year-old beef jerky. In 2000... Okay, that's, that's beef jerky. I thought that was something else. <laughs> I thought that was uh, a little bit of cannabis is what I thought that was, you know what I mean? 2,000-year-old beef jerky. In 2009, Archaeologists in Shanxi Province, China, stumbled upon an unexpected find, 2,000-year-old beef jerky. Well, perhaps this one should have remained buried beneath the ground. This jerky was found in the village of Wanli. When archaeologists unearthed the bronze pot, they didn't expect that it would contain dried meat. 
Upon closer examination, they realized it was a form of beef jerky dating back to the Warring States period, which is roughly between 475 and 221 BCE. The beef jerky was found in an ancient tomb, suggesting it might have been intended as sustenance for the afterlife. The pot was sealed tight, and although the meat had turned to a greenish-black color due to oxidization, it had remarkably retained its shape and showed no signs of shrinkage. This preservation was likely due to the process of drying the meat before it was placed in the tomb. It might be unsafe to eat, but 2,000 years ago, this was probably one of the best dried meats in the region. Now, I don't know about you, but I love beef jerky. Jerky, as we know, is a fantastic way to keep meat edible for long periods, making it an essential travel snack, whether for the living or the dead. In ancient China, similar methods to our modern-day jerky were used, involving drying and possibly smoking meat to keep it from spoiling. Again, instead of being something made for the living, this jerky was intended for the dead. Now, it's intended for researchers to research. Number 14. The Knife-Armed Man Back in 1985, archaeologists unearthed the remains of 222 individuals, but one skeleton stood out. This man, who lived between the 6th and 8th centuries, had his hand amputated at the forearm. Now, instead of living without an arm, he decided to use one of the oldest examples of prostheses. He used a knife as a prosthetic limb. Now, you see, safely removing a limb and putting on a prosthesis is a sensitive operation to this day. Now imagine doing it at a time when antibiotics haven't even been invented yet. It's a miracle that the man didn't suffer from any infections. It also seemed like the knife-armed man's community must have cared for him meticulously, helping him avoid fatal infections. Researchers found signs that his limb had healed well, indicating he lived for years after the amputation. Now here's a reason why archaeology is fascinating. The man's teeth were worn on just one side, which hinted that perhaps the man used to bite the straps of his prostheses to tighten them. His shoulder bones also showed unusual wear, which means he constantly used his knife arm. Number 13. Jamestown's Residence Jamestown was the first permanent English settlement in America, established in 1607. Unfortunately, an incident in 1609 led to the collapse of this settlement. A mysterious explosion forced Captain John Smith to return to England, leaving the colony leaderless. At the same time, the situation arose that prevented the Jamestown residents from foraging for food. With their supplies dwindling, starvation became their number one problem. And now, archaeologists have discovered that the desperate residents of Jamestown had a last resort to prevent themselves from dying. Archaeological excavations of Jamestown in 2012 uncovered gruesome evidence of these desperate times. Researchers found the remains of people who must have been consumed as a meal to nourish themselves at a time when surviving for another day was their only priority. Now this is truly a horrific discovery that showed what things people in the past resorted to just to survive. Number 12. Shackled Skeletons In 2016, archaeologists uncovered what seems to be one of the most macabre discoveries at the Phaleron Delta site in Egypt. Over 80 skeletons buried side by side. These remains are believed to be from the 7th century BCE, a time of significant political upheaval in ancient Athens. Now, for some bizarre and unknown reason, these people were shackled, their wrists bundled in iron cuffs. Some were laid on their backs, others on their stomachs, but it all appeared to be bound in some way. This suggests that they might have been prisoners who met a grim fate, possibly through mass execution. This site is one of the largest cemeteries from the Classical Age discovered in Greece, with around 1,500 skeletons in total. The discovery has sparked numerous theories about who these individuals were, some scholars suggest they could be followers of Cylon, an Athenian noble who attempted a coup around 632 BCE. His conspiracy failed, and his supporters were reportedly executed, possibly explaining the mass grave and shackles. Number 11. Screaming Mummy This is the remains of Prince Pentuer. Now, it doesn't take a genius to realize that his mummy doesn't seem to be befitting for royalty. Prince Pentuer was the son of Pharaoh Ramesses III, who ruled Egypt during a tumultuous period around 1155 BC. Pentuer's legacy, however, is shrouded in betrayal and a gruesome end. Pentuer is believed to have tried to assassinate his father, a plan he hatched with his mother, Queen Taya. In the end, 
Prince Pentawer's plan failed, and he was found guilty. It seemed that the ancient Egyptians thought that their supposed prince didn't really deserve a dignified end at a royal burial. His body was discovered mummified in a matter considered impure by ancient Egyptian standards, without embalming fluids. And Imagine being the father and having to carry this out, having to give the orders for this. Now, for those of you who don't have kids, you might not understand this, but the ki your kids, bro, they get away with so much. And even this in this situation right here, attempted murder, you're still in your mind try to figure out some kind of way to forgive them, right? If you have kids, you get that. You don't, you won't understand this. So to carry out something like this, I know this wasn't easy. Well, maybe for them back then it might've been, but these days, still in all, you feel like, ah, oh, but that's my kid. So maybe I just banish him. But they went to an extent of probably having him killed. And wrapped in sheepskin. Now what's more befitting is the fact that Pentaware's body is stuck in a position that seems like he's screaming in agony, even in death. While some believe that this pose is intentional, some believe that it was just the natural effect of the mummification method done on his remains. Whichever the reason is, it's this agonizing expression that made Pentaware's mummy renowned. Number 10. Secret Cinema Back in 2004, during a routine training exercise, the Parisian police stumbled upon something unexpected beneath the city, a secret cinema hidden right in the middle of the Paris catacombs. Now, the catacombs of Paris are a vast complex tunnel filled with bones. Now, you're probably thinking, who would even want to watch a movie in a tunnel lined with human skulls? Well, there are people out there who seem to like the idea. The police found one of the large caverns transformed into an amphitheater with a full-size screen, projection equipment, and even seating for an audience. Imagine watching a horror film. I know a lot of y'all was thinking just like me. Probably saw when the light bulb went off in my brain. Imagine watching a horror film down there with a bunch of people, bro. That would be in. Oh my God. That might elevate the horror movie that much. For, like, you know what I mean? Sometimes you watch a horror movie and you be like, ah, oh, that really. And then you be like, oh, that was a good horror movie. But I feel like it'll take it to the next level you watch it down here. Audience. That's not everything. Adjacent to the cinema was a fully functional bistro with a bar, cooking equipment, and tables. Now, it's an open secret that a secretive collective of urban explorers, artists, and historians have established this bizarre and macabre cinema. This collective has been revitalizing forgotten corners of Paris since the 1980s. And for the catacombs, the cinema is the perfect addition. Would you be comfortable watching a movie in this macabre attraction? I'd probably try it for the experience but doing it alone would be a terrifying feat. Number 9. The Crypt of the Capuchin Monks Beneath the church of Santa Maria della Concezione dei Cappuccini in Rome is one of the city's eeriest and most astounding attractions, the Crypt of the Capuchin Monks. Imagine walking into a place where the walls and ceilings are adorned with the bones of over 3,700 Capuchin friars. Sounds horrifying, doesn't it? Despite many people being terrified of the crypt, countless tourists continue to visit the crypt. Now, if this is your first time hearing about it, you're probably wondering just why someone would create such an attraction. The crypt's creation dates back to early 17th century, when Cardinal Antonio Marcello Barberini, a member of the Capuchin Order, ordered the remains of his fellow monks to be exhumed and transferred to this crypt. You see, the Capuchins believed that death should be a constant reminder of the fleeting nature of life. The crypt consists of six chapels, each uniquely decorated with bones. One of the most striking is the Crypt of the Skulls, where skulls are arranged in arches and columns. Another notable chapel is the Crypt of the Pelvises, featuring pelvic bones arranged in intricate patterns. But perhaps the most haunting attraction in the crypt might be the Crypt of the Three Skeletons, where three complete skeletons dressed in capuchin robes are displayed for all to see. Number 8. Headless Vikings of Dorset. In 2009, archaeologists discovered the remains of 54 men on Ridgeway Hill in Dorset, England. Now, these bodies date back centuries. What's bizarre is that for some grim reason, these men all lost their heads. Centuries ago, someone ordered for these men to be executed and for their heads to be placed in a pile separate from their bodies. Naturally, archaeologists were immediately eager to know the story behind them. 
The men buried here were likely Vikings, determined by radiocarbon dating and an isotope analysis of their teeth, which pointed to a Scandinavian origin. They weren't just any Vikings, though. Some researchers believe they might have been mercenaries. It's possible that after being defeated, the English punished their invaders in the most inhumane way to intimidate them and scare them away. Number 7. The Hand of Glory The Hand of Glory is a macabre artifact rooted in European folklore. Traditionally, it's the preserved hand of a hanged criminal transformed into a tool of dark magic. Never thought we needed to preserve something like that before. I can't for the life of me figure out why y'all would think we need to preserve this. No. Maybe they put it back on display back then, just as a warning to others to not do what he did or whoever did. This gruesome relic was believed to possess extraordinary powers, especially useful for thieves and burglars. The process of creating a hand of glory was as sinister as its intended use. The hand would be cut off the body of an executed criminal, preferably during an eclipse for added potency. It was then dried, pickled, and often dipped in wax, the fingers, or attached candles made from the fat of the hanged man, would be lit to cast a spell that immobilized and silenced the inhabitants of a house, allowing thieves to rob with ease. If the thumb refused to burn, it was a sign that someone in the house was awake and immune to the spell. Stories of the Hand of Glory span across centuries and regions. In fact, today, there's a Hand of Glory displayed at Whitby Museum, an independent museum in Whitby, North Yorkshire, England. Number 6. The Vampire of Venice In 2009, archaeologists discovered the skeleton of a woman with a brick lodged firmly in her mouth. Even for a burial dating back from 16th century Venice, this is incredibly bizarre. The woman's remains were uncovered on Lazzaretto Nuovo, an island in the Venetian lagoon used as a mass grave during a plague outbreak in 1576. Her body was found among many other plague victims. But what set her apart was the brick. Archaeologists believe that this brick might have been placed in between the woman's mouth because of their belief that she would later on become the undead. You see, during the medieval era, people believed that vampires weren't creatures that bite people's necks to drain them, but rather beings that spread disease by chewing on their burial shrouds after death. To prevent this, gravediggers sometimes forced bricks into the mouths of suspected vampires to stop them from continuing their deadly feasting, even in death. But why exactly was this woman singled out? Forensic anthropologists discovered that this woman was about 61 years old and likely of lower social status. Perhaps it was her old age that led people to think that she was involved in rituals and possibly black magic. Needless to say, her burial is pretty macabre. Number 5. Rosalia Lombardo Rosalia Lombardo was just two years old when she passed away from pneumonia in 1920. No one deserves to perish at such a young age. The most affected person in little Rosalia's death was her father. Unable to simply forget about her daughter and give her a normal burial, the little one's grieving father asked Alfredo Salafia to embalm his daughter so that she would remain well-preserved for eternity. Moved by the little girl's father, Alfredo tried his best to preserve the girl's body, and he delivered what he promised. The secret to Rosalia's incredible state of preservation lies in the embalming formula used by Salafia. Using traditional methods that involved removing internal organs, Salafia injected a mix of formalin, glycerin, zinc salts, and salicylic acid into Rosalia's body. This concoction eliminated bacteria, prevented fungal growth, and ensured her body didn't dehydrate while the zinc salts gave her tissues remarkable rigidity and a lifelike appearance. To this day, Rosalia's body is still one of the most well-preserved mummies ever found. Her body is now displayed in a glass case inside the Capuchin Catacombs of Palermo. Visitors claim that Rosalia's body is so well-preserved that it's almost spooky to look at her. Several- Yeah, the first time you look at it, you're like, okay, that's maybe wax or plastic or, or something, you know what I mean? that they did that way. But to hear the story and didn't hear that, it's actually, that's that's insane to see how well-preserved that is, if it's true. People have even reported seeing her eyelids mysteriously opening and closing. For years, it was thought to be a supernatural occurrence. However, some skeptics claim that this alleged movement is actually an optical illusion caused by the light filtering through the catacomb windows, creating the illusion that her eyes are moving. 
Number 4. Ancient Cursed Tablets In December 2019, archaeologists on Mount Ebel discovered a small folded lead tablet measuring about 2 by 2 centimeters. This tablet is revealed to be an ancient amulet known as a cursed tablet. These were common in various ancient cultures and were typically used to invoke curses upon one's enemies. But what's truly groundbreaking about this particular tablet is its inscription. Using advanced scanning technology, researchers revealed 40 letters in an early form of Hebrew, with the word curse appearing 10 times and the name of God, YHW, appearing twice. Now it's safe to say that this ancient cursed tablet has a chilling inscription. The inscription reads, Cursed, 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 cursed by the god YHW. You will die cursed. Cursed, you will surely die. Cursed by YHW. Cursed, cursed, cursed. The excessive use of the word cursed aside, this tablet contains the oldest known Hebrew inscription of God's name. It challenges the long-held belief that the Bible's texts were passed down orally for generations before being written down during the Persian or Hellenistic periods. Instead, it supports the idea that they could have been recorded as early as the Late Bronze Age. Whoever inscribed this tablet must have had a huge grudge against someone who pushed them to create such a chilling cursed artifact. Number 3. Tumor with Human Teeth Yes, tumors can contain human teeth. If you want nightmare fuel, I suggest you search what a teratoma looks like. That's the type of tumor discovered in a 3,000-year-old burial in Egypt. The teratoma was found in the remains of a woman who lived during the New Kingdom era. So what exactly are teratomas? These are normal tumors that can contain fully formed teeth and sometimes even hair or bones. In her case, the teratoma had teeth embedded within it. Today, teratomas are still found in several patients. But this 3,000-year-old lump is the oldest example of this tumor that has ever been found. The woman's remains were found in Amarna, a significant archaeological site that once housed the city of Akhetaten, the capital established by Pharaoh Akhenaten. The condition of her burial suggests she might have been part of the working class. But what made her stand out more is the Bess ring carefully placed on her left hand. Bess, in ancient Egyptian mythology, was a dwarf god associated with protection, childbirth, and household welfare. Now it's possible that the woman might have been seeking the protective and healing powers of Bess to alleviate the symptoms caused by her teratoma. Tragically, the small object did nothing to save her from succumbing to her illness. Number 2. Cave of Altamira In 1868, Modesto Cubias discovered the Cave of Altamira a stunning cave complex located near the historic town of Santiana del Mar in Cantabria, Spain. However, it wasn't until years later that amateur archaeologist Marcelino Sanz de Sautuola studied the complex. This cave measures about 3,300 feet long, and what's astounding is that on every twisting passage and chamber are artworks of wild animals that lived during the Paleolithic and Old Stone Ages. Altamira's art provides a glimpse into the lives and beliefs of the people who lived thousands of years ago. The artworks inside are so incredible that the Cave of Altamira was even named the Sistine Chapel of Prehistory in the past. However, the cave's discovery jeopardized the artworks in the complex. After being briefly opened to the public, the cave was closed after researchers noticed damage in the prehistoric artworks. Instead of letting people see the original cave, a near-identical replica was made near the original cavern complex instead. This replica allowed visitors to appreciate the incredible art without damaging the original site. If the cave were never discovered, the artwork inside it would have been preserved for hundreds if not thousands of years more. However, this would also mean that we wouldn't be able to witness the beauty of art created by people who lived in prehistory. And now it's time for today's topic. This ancient discovery should have been kept a secret. In the arid expanse of a desert, archaeologists allegedly discovered a tomb. Now, usually, tombs have been looted by tomb raiders long before archaeologists could find them. This one, however, was reportedly untouched. Unfortunately, the tomb was initially found by workers operating heavy machinery, damaging some parts of it. Now, it's believed that those who have damaged the ancient tomb are cursed with ill luck for the rest of their lives. Uh, then we need to release their names so we know not to befriend them or go around them ever. The idea of ancient curses and tombs that should remain unsealed has been popular for centuries. 
While some believe that such curses exist, there are also those who believe that it's nothing but a myth created to deter tomb robbers. But what do you think? Number one, Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered between 1947 and 1956 in the Qumran Caves near the Dead Sea, hence the name. These ancient manuscripts date from the 3rd century BCE to the 1st century CE and include text from the Hebrew Bible, sectarian writings, and other documents. Now, among these scrolls is the Copper Scroll. Unlike the other scrolls, which were written on parchment or papyrus, the Copper Scroll is made of, yep, you guessed it, copper. This suggests it was meant to last longer, preserving its secret message through the ages. However, the most interesting thing about this scroll lies in its contents. You see, the Copper Scroll actually contains the secret of an alleged ancient treasure. Written in Hebrew and Greek, it lists 64 hiding places that are supposedly filled with vast amounts of gold, silver, and other precious items. The treasures described are immense, including around 65 tons of silver and 26 tons of gold. If even a fracture of these treasures were found, it would be one of the greatest discoveries in history. However, the instructions aren't really straightforward, and despite numerous expeditions, none of the treasures... Basically, what you're telling me is I need to figure out some type of technology, easier said than done, that can crack these codes. I feel like we're on the way to that anyway, so y'all down with me, we can go find this money and split it evenly amongst ourselves. ...listed in the Copper Scroll have been found.